it occurred to me that every human being who is alive is a leaf on the tree of life. And that as leaves on the tree of life, each of us has the capacity to heal rather than to hurt or to destroy. And if we are to be good leaves, we have to be conscientious about our own health, holistically understood. And you probably from high school science will remember that it is the leaf on the plant that is the center of the process of photosynthesis. And that photosynthesis is characterized by the process of drawing water and minerals out of the ground and then drawing carbon dioxide from the air and with chlorophyll in the plant and the energy of the sun driving the chemical process, the leaf produces the food for the plant, sends it back down to the stem all the way to the root. The fascinating thing about it is that in producing for itself, the byproduct of photosynthesis is the production of oxygen, which is a healing agent, which then means that if you and I on leaves, on the tree of life. It becomes our responsibility to be conscious, first of all, and conscientious about our own health, holistically understood. It means that for each of us in here, to be conscientious about our health means taking good care of our bodies, our minds, our relationships, our vocation, our relationship in the community, our economic productivity, and our embeddedness in the environment that is the climate within which we find our lives. All of these areas, we want to make sure we are optimizing capacities in these areas. But then to be a healer is to then exude to give off the healing oxygen for wherever we are, that it will be well. Problem by this sermon. And by the way, I've learned to preach a sermon outline. I don't know exactly what time you all close, but I suspect this is about closing time already. <laughs> but, but, but so I don't, I don't think I have to give a long sermon today. You see, nation at this particular point in our history is very sick. In fact, I try to understand what is the most serious epidemic in the nation today? When I got started listing what the big problems are we all are concerned about, I, I found myself writing down a list of, of, of 12 things. I won't mention them all, but you know what's on my list. It's the same list as yours. We got problems with racism, sexism, homophobia, economic disparity. We got climate issues. We've got incarceration. We got immigration. We've got health care, we've got education. We all have about the same list. In fact, I discovered that for anyone who's working on any one of those problems really seriously, and you really want to make a change, you are likely in the United States of America today, when you measure the effectiveness of your work, you are likely to be discouraged. In fact, what I figured is people are discouraged largely because they, when they work, tend to focus on the particular problem they're concerned about. But there is a word called syndrome, which speaks of multiple elements 
contributing as symptoms in regards to a particular disease that's characterized, which means if you look at just one piece, if you're just interested in race, and you're not interested in gender issues or, or orientation issues or economic issues or climate issues or, or, or national security. If you're interested in one of them, you, you, you're going to miss it. But so I said, you know, the biggest problem in America is what I call the dirty dozen syndrome. All of these things mixed together and we are frustrated because we can't change things. This is why... The political process is so frightening today because there is in this nation something that calls politicians to act mean and ugly and angry and nasty and messing over each other and everybody's dissatisfied with everybody else. But so, so, so the Lord said, dirty doesn't syndrome doesn't find. So the Lord gave me a better title. The serious epidemic, and, now, and I'm all ready to give you the sermon outline, almost ready. The, the, the serious problem in the, today, which I'm going to ask you to repeat and see if it sounds right in your head. You know, well, the best way to explain this one is my daddy uh, once told a story, and you can tell us a story, because he said the devil once had a going out of business sale. You know that's a sale. The <laughs> devil ain't never going out of business. You know what I mean? He said, and all of the items on the shelf sold quickly. But one item could not be sold. The price was too high. So they asked the devil, well, why you put such a high price tag on this one? And the devil says, listen, all of these others like lying and cheating and backbiting and carrying on, uh, they sold quickly. They have done great work for me. But this one is one of the most powerful instruments I've got. I had to put a high price on it. Well, what is it? He says, this is it. This instrument is the one instrument that I can use to get people to do most anything I want them to do. Well, what is it, devil? And the devil says, this one is the wedge of discouragement. But I can stick that wedge of discouragement in and push it before you know it. I've just about got that person in my hand. Well, let me tell you, you and I live in a nation where the wedge of discouragement has been pressed into hearts all over, rich and poor, and black and white, gay and straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew, Sikh. There is a wave of discouragement across the land. And I suspect, I call it DDS, degenerative discouragement syndrome. We all repeat that. Degenerative discouragement syndrome. And I think maybe the reason the Lord is making me give this message is because I think there is something in it that addresses that condition. And basically, that's the introduction. Here are the basic points, and then I'll, 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 I'll be recognizing we got stuff to do, including get ready for the games this afternoon. I'm going to... <laughs> It's about Joseph. Joseph <laughs> represents a symbol of the most successful and possibly satisfied and powerful and influential person in his time. He had become the governor, really, under Pharaoh. He had Everything anybody normally would want. And yet, in this text, something begins to happen to him, which I think will address our need to overcome DDS, the degenerative discouragement syndrome. You see, what happens was that Joseph, uh, having become so powerful,
popular and famous because he had the clue from God that there were going to be seven years of plenty to be followed by seven years of famine. And just like he predicted it happened, and during the years of plenty, he gathered all of the grain, had so much, it just overflowed all of the barns and granaries they had. And then the famine set in. And when the famine set in, all of a sudden, he was encountering a moment that proved to him he hadn't had everything. Or he may have had all the money he needed. He may have all the power he could wish for. But there was something still lacking in his life. It was when his brothers from the land of Canaan came down to Egypt to get grain because the famine was intense. It was during this time that he had I've been searching for how do you come. He had a moment when he came clear about what his life was all about, the why of it. It was a moment when he not only came clear, but it was a moment when the Spirit <coughs> pushed him to come clean. He came clear, he came clean, so much so until it had to come out, he came free, and he came focused and empowered. Now, let me see if I can get on. Can you imagine what, what, what kind of combination? This very moment that I've described in this text is a moment where all in one flash, he comes clear about why, why am I alive today. He became clean. This is who I am. He came out. Here I am. He came free. He came focused. He came empowered, ready to do the rest that God has for him to do. Oh, when I said open mine eyes that I might see, I guess I would really suggest, I wish God would open somebody's eyes here today. That somebody would find out, why am I here? Why did I survive the ups and downs of my life? Why am I still standing and others are already gone? Why did the Lord preserve my life to give me life and health and strength and influence and power and possibilities and gifts? Why? Oh, I wish a little bit of that might happen here today for somebody. Just a little bit of it. Well, well let, let, me, let me quickly, now that I've explained it to you, tell you what was going on in that very moment when, when, when Joseph felt that I'm losing it. Uh, I'm, I'm losing this thing. He now, being Mr. Zaphonath Pania, the high-ranking governor of all of Egypt with his Canaanite brothers down bowing in front of him, why, why? He, all, all of a sudden he felt this thing happen. I'm about to lose it, and I do not want to lose my cool. I do not want to lose my dignity. I do not want to let them see me, you know, barefooted in the presence of, of, of royalty. And so he said, y'all Egyptians, get out, get out, get out, get out. And as soon as he got him out, he said, oh, 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 he, he, the text says he cried so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, that the Pharaoh heard it. And I guess outside, if they'd have known it, they'd say, what's going on? They were, they were wondering, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, anyway, he explains to his brothers what had happened to him. Now, let me put, tell you what happened. Like, like you're getting ready to have an accident and all your life flashes in front of you, this is exactly what happened to him. Like in a moment, in a very moment, he saw his life, which when the last time I preached to you about it, it was he saw that his whole life was a history of ups and downs. And you know something about this. He said, you know, in my dreams, he, he all, now mind you, you got to put all of this in the flash, flash framing of, of, of a split second. He saw 
him dreaming about how his sheaves of wheat were standing up and everybody else's sheaves of wheat were bowing down. He saw his brothers hating his guts because of his father's love and his coat of many colors or long sleeves, whichever. He, he saw them putting him down in, in a pit. He saw them taking him up out of the pit. All, all, all of this is happening in a split second now. He saw, he, saw, he, he, saw, he, saw, he saw them selling him down into Egypt. He, 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 saw, he, saw, he saw how they took his garment back to the father and gave the garment to the father and said, Father, look here. And, and Jacob they, they just said, Oh, my son, my son is dead. Oh, and, and he saw that. Then he saw himself going to Potiphar's house. He saw himself becoming the king. I mean, head of everything in the man's house. And according to the text, the text says that, uh, that Mrs. Potiphar looked at him, that he was a handsome and good-looking man, and Mrs. Potiphar sat her eye on him, made advances towards him. He refused. But then when everybody was gone, she reached out and grabbed his garment. And you know, there's, there's a, he grabbed his garment. May I pause for station identification? Sometimes, brother, you got to leave your garment behind. You better get out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and he saw that he went to prison, and from prison he went to the palace, and he interpreted the dream, and now here he is in charge of all of this. All of this happened. But, but in addition, while he's seeing the history of his life as a history of ups and downs, he also, in that same split second, he could see, how is it that I made it through all of these things? And, 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 and it was quickly revealed to him, like you all ask us to hold these hands out today. Look at your hands. Look at, look at your hands. He, he saw that the reason I have made it through my ups and downs is because the hand of God was with me. Oh, is anybody in here aware of what he went through? To look back over your life and be able to say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, if the Lord had not stood by me in my darkest hours and kept me keeping on, I don't know whether I would have made it. He, he could see the hand of God at work in his life. So much so, until it finally, like, oh, 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 oh. I now know the why and the what for of my life. He, he said, these dudes st bow here before me. These are my brothers. They, they the ones that sold me into slavery. That's why I've been messing with them. That's why I put the money back in the sack. That's why I held them in prison for three days. That's why I accused them of... I, I didn't like that. But, but, but now, now that I see how the hand of God was using me, I now know. And he said, well, I might as well tell them. So he, he just came out. He said, I am Joseph. That shook him. Joseph. Because up until then, he was Zaphonath And then he said, is my father still alive? Your father? Our father? They recognize that that's, we, we, we the one that did him in. We the one that just, we tried to kill him, really. We, and so they were dismayed. He said, look, don't, don't be dismayed. And I'm about through with my sermon, y'all, so don't, don't, it's, not, it's, it's, it's almost over. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, don't be dismayed. When you get home, look up the word dismayed. People all over the United States are dismayed. I'm beginning to understand, Jackie, why we have such trouble with the Black Lives Matter movement. You understand this? They, they were dismayed. When you get, when you get caught, I mean, finally it's beginning to be revealed in terms of police community relationships, what's been going on all the time. We just didn't have the cell phone to catch it. Uh, it and now it's been revealed how concussion reveals how NFL takes lives and don't care what happens. We've learned from the big short how the banks messed over everybody. The cover are coming off and we discover how exploitative this nation has been 
against a whole lot of folks, not just black folks, Latino folks, but poor white folks and other middle class folks. Everybody been messing over. They were so dismayed they could hardly say anything. That's why we had so much denial. Folks can't acknowledge this stuff. I mean, stuff has been happening so nasty, so mean, so long, that they can, the only way they can live is to deny it. And what we do to the president, oh, ain't got nothing to do with race. We just don't like government on Oh, Come on, y'all. Don't tell me these lies. Let me tell you the truth. He, th these brothers were so dismayed, they could hardly say anything. And he said, listen, don't talk. Don't be dismayed. Just chill, let me explain to you, then I'm through. Let me explain to you uh, what happened. He says, God has revealed to me, you sold me, but God sent me. I love that. <laughs> you sold me, but God sent me. I'm here for a purpose, and now I know what the purpose is. Oh, as I share what he said, I hope God will begin to let some of you know why you are still here, why you have the money, the influence, the power, the, the gifts, the talents, the, 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 the opportunities you have. Yeah, yeah, let me tell you what he said, and then I should be through first. He says, God sent me here to preserve life. Let everybody say, to preserve life. That is to say that every member of this species, God made us, and there is within every heart, unless it's had a great fall, the need to preserve the life of people, of, of all life, as you can. In other words, God would be pleased if everyone could say, I'm a lifesaver. Let everybody say, I'm a lifesaver. Life th that's what God wants. How many people are alive today because of what you've done? Or how many will be alive because what you're getting ready to do? How many people's lives can you save by the use of your influence and by the use of your power? You have to be a lifesaver. But not only that, he said, that God told me not only to save lives in general. The reason I'm saving lives in general is because all lives matter. Let everybody say all lives matter. All lives matter. But I have a special task. I brought you here to preserve, for these guys that are in front of you, to preserve a remnant. So you got to preserve the life and culture of your own people. Uh-huh. You are not just to save life in general. You're supposed to be here to preserve a remnant for the survivors of your own. So I want to say a word to white people here. Can I talk to white people? I know this is an integrated church, but I want to talk to white, white people. Don't let anybody make you upset with being white no more. The double negatives are intentional. If you are white, you ought to be proud of it. Let me tell you one thing white people taught us. Ta white people taught us affirmative action. They had it a long time before it became a political slogan. Y'all look out for white folks. Some of y'all got old drunken uncles that y'all take care of. No, they ain't worth a dime, some of them. But, you, but, but, they, but they your family. Y'all take care of them. You give them jobs. You give them advancement. You pick them up. You clean them up. And when they go back, you do visit them. Or so. I mean, white folks taught America affirmative action. Only you taught affirmative action for yourselves. Now that you're beginning to understand what I'm getting ready to tell you, I think maybe black folks need to understand that. So I think that you all are right. The problem you never could say it because you didn't need to say it. I hope white folks will say in here that white lives matter. Say it. Yeah, so y'all didn't have to say it because your power said it for you. But now remember, Hill Jack is sitting over here. And, and Jackie? I know you're in an integrated church, and I know you try to speak to everybody, but let me tell you something. If you don't know, I guess that's why you wear your dreadlocks. I guess, is that why you keep on them dreadlocks? Then you should have that stuff permed, girl. You, you, you should have that stuff permed out. But, but, but maybe, may, may, maybe, hey, Jackie, can, do black lives matter? Can you say it? Well, can you get the white folks to say it with you? But what about, what about gay lives? Do they matter? Gay lives matter. What about Latino lives? Latino lives matter. What about old lives like me? Old lives matter. The reason the particular is I have given you a job of saving lives. 
but I want you to save a remnant of those who are despised and rejected because I have a special preference for that. Now, one last one, and then I'm going to ask Betty to come back and help me get dressed again because I've got to <laughs> close the sermon. Come on, I'm going to finish the sermon on the floor. Baby. Come on, come on, Betty, help me get dressed again. The last thing, I've been preaching this sermon for 50 years, but the problem is that I found something else. Let me dress, my, dress me up. Uh, Jackie, this text that tells us that the reason Joseph was preserved was to save life, but also to save the life of his people. Problem is, who are his people? There you go. There you go. Let me explain that. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Our, our white people have been saying Black Lives Matter for at least a year and a half, right, y'all? Yeah. Somebody say amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> but, but Jackie, Jackie, that's okay. the only reason I can say it like that here, because I know this is the church. I mean, I know you. So I, I can say it to them like that, and they don't have to get nervous and mess up my sermon feeling all bad. I, I understand that. But the, but the reality is, the reality is that, uh, that, that and I'm, I'm about through. It's, a, it's a, almost 1 o'clock now. It's about, uh, where's your husband? Where's your husband? Is he here? Yeah, Where come on up, come on. He, he helped us over at Riverside. Come on, man. let me explain. See, you don't know who he is. That's the problem. His name is Joseph. Let me explain who he is, though. He is, and why he didn't, why he, why he had courage enough to reach out to the, the, the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. This is, do you know what his name? His name is Joseph. But guess what? He's not just Joseph. When you say he got to preserve his people, it's not just white people. You know why? Because he is Joseph, but he's the brother to Benjamin. That's his sibling from his mother, Rachel. Yeah. But more than that, they had the same, uh, they had the same daddy. Yeah. All these other brothers of the 12 tribes of Israel, they his brothers too. Oh, they're Billa and Zilpah and all these other mothers. Other mothers. They, they might have had different mothers, but they had the same daddy. Yeah. This brother right here is the brother to Benjamin. He is the brother to the 12 tribes. But guess what? He's a part of the great Abrahamic tradition. He is not only Joseph's and Jacob's. He is the Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Rebecca. And you know, he, he, is a, he is the whole smear of the Abrahamic people. But more than that, he remembers that when God spoke to Abraham, God says, Abraham, I'm going to bless you because you're special. You special white man. But guess what? Your specialness will be manifested in your being the one through whom all the nations of the earth will be. So when he's looking out for himself, he got to look out for the whole species. He got to look out for the whole creation because he, as a representative of the love of God, is all of us. So preserve life and then preserve his people's lives. That's all of us. At least, clearly, the homo sapiens of who we all are in that same thing. Is that about right, Pastor? You feel very that, 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 that. anyway, 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 I'm closing. The the last thing, yeah, man, the last thing, is that uh, this text ends up saying, "Go and get my daddy, and bring all the family, because I'm going to have you in Goshen, and the reason I want you all to come is so that you do not come to poverty." And that shocked me because I had been taught that the anti-poverty program began with LBJ. <laughs> or I thought maybe it started with uh, FDR or maybe Russian Bush and some of the social gospel people. And all of a sudden I discover that the anti-poverty program began with God. That God, from the very dawn of creation, was very concerned about the absence of poverty. But let me explain this, and then I come back to another piece. Give me another one. Okay. Explain this, that for God, from a God's eye perspective, and I've checked with God about this, that, 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 that for God, poverty is not measured by some kind of index that they have down in Washington. That when God measures poverty, it starts with, God's dream of what humankind and the creation would be. 
And God made us in God's own image. And anything that robs any of us of any element that would be essential for our fulfilling our destiny under God, there's poverty. So that if somebody doesn't have water, like in Flint, Michigan, that's poverty. Or if they don't have food, like some of the families in South Bronx and in Manhattan, if the truth be known, that's poverty. If they don't have health care, that's poverty. If they don't have educational opportunity, that's poverty. If they have educational opportunity and don't have a decent job, that's poverty. If they have a decent job and don't have a decent living wage, that's poverty. If they have decent wage, wait, 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 wait. let me close this out. If they are, if they are billionaires, you have any millionaires in this church? Maybe. That, but they wouldn't let you know. Normally, they don't let you know. But anyway, if there are any millionaires in here and you have not yet discovered the why and the what for of your life, I'm going to have to call you a poor millionaire. Or you're just as poor as you can be. You got all of this stuff and you don't know why you're here. And you don't know what God had riding on your life. And you don't know why you've been sustained through all of the stuff that goes on to help you get what you got. And you haven't yet figured out your purpose and you don't know what for or why, you're just as poor as a thirsty beggar on the street. Now that means it's time to close the sermon. I have discovered, and I wonder, is there a lawyer in the house? I have a, if there's a, there's a lawyer, lawyer, would you help me? They're getting ready to figure out how they can work the Second Amendment rights so you all can have more guns. You understand the reason for the guns is <laughs> that people discovered, like they, the brothers discovered about Joseph, they, they thought, oh, God, they're going to do to us the same thing. <laughs> Folks, tell these people, don't worry about Negroes worrying about getting retribution on you about what your granddaddy did. We, we were deprived. We were impoverished for justice, impoverished for dignity, impoverished for self-respect. And we, we didn't got time to be looking around for no revenge. We, we don't have time to be looking for y'all. We ain't coming after y'all. And, and we, 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 we too busy seeking justice and peace for, for a well-being to fulfill our destiny under God. Anyway, anyway, um, if the lawyers could help me get a little peace, I would like to say, can you, I don't want to get an amendment, but could you put a, an addendum to the preamble about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which cannot be achieved under conditions of poverty? Could, 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 could I just stick that in there? Could, could I just stick that so that it becomes an American? to be accepting of poverty conditions as a normal way of life in our culture. But well, anyway, that's enough. I'm closing now. Uh, Jack has looked at her bulletin several times <laughs> because uh, people out there, you know. But, uh, but I can't close without my testimony. This is my testimony. I've been thinking, and God has revealed to me something about what I'm going to do. And Jack, I'll, Jackie, I'll be talking to you about what the... And, and I'm going to be... Uh, see, you got your picture up here now. Now I want to know why. Why did God bring you here? Why and what for? What is this all about? I'm on, we gonna have lunch. Betty, when Jack and I get together, it ain't just cause she's cute. It's, be, it, it, it's because we want to compare notes on what is the what for for the rest of your leadership. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. But in the yeah, we, we'll, we'll talk. You split, we'll split. We'll split the bill. Or either you pay the tip, okay? All right, anyway, we'll, we'll get together. The point is, the point is, that I have told the Lord, Lord, I don't know why you saved me. A little boy from Burgall, North Carolina, with a southern accent, Pentecostal background, and all this stuff. But I'll tell you what, I've made up my mind what I'm going to do. I'm 80 years old now, and I'm beginning to work on my next 80 years. I might not make it but one year, two years, three years, whatever. But, but I've decided this is what I'm going to do, and this is how I close. I said, Lord, you've been so good that I'm going to praise you in the way I'm going to do it, in the way that I walk, in the way that I talk, in the way that I think, and in the way that I pray. In everything I do, I want to honor you by the way I live each day. So I guess I'll ask you to stand and do that with me. If you're getting some inkling of the why and what for of your life, go repeat after me, in the way that I walk, in the way that I talk, in the way that I think, and in the way that I pray, in everything I do, 
I want to honor you by the way I live each day. But for the young man, you have to do it like this. In the way that I walk, in the way that I talk, in the way that I think, and in the way that I pray. In everything I do, I want to honor you by the way I live each day. Come on, come on. In the way that I walk, in the way that I talk, in the way that I think, and in the way that I pray. In everything I do, I want to honor you by the way I live each day.